Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this Grasshopper tutorial, we want to convert a surface uh, into a series of triangles, which I'm going to explain. And then, as you can see here, we can make an offset, which is going to be the offset of the triangles. And we're also going to define a series of circles, which are going to connect these edges together. And we're going to do that step by step. So be sure to watch the video till the end. Uh, and let's get started from scratch. First, what I want to do here is to assume that we start with a surface. Uh, it has to be a NURB surface because we're going to use uh, some tools to divide this into a series of UVs. Uh, so what I want to do here is to go to the Mesh and Utility and use this Mesh Surface tool. The reason I'm using this is because it's easier to convert that into a Mesh by using the Mesh surface components okay let's just also turn on the preview mesh edges so you can see that and now we can just define the number of uv counts so i'm going to say 3 2 12 okay to convert these quads into a series of uh, triangles you can also use the utility and triangulate tool. As you can see, it triangulate all quads in a mesh, it tries to triangulate that. You use that to convert it into a series of triangles. We just want to have a series of random uh, triangles. So you can also use the triangulation tri remesh tool if you just want to have a series of random turn this off. triangles, which the most important part is the length. So I'm going to give a number slider to that. And as you can see here, I can increase or decrease the number, which is completely random. So whatever technique you use, you have the meshes now here or here, whatever you want. And the most important thing is how can we uh, extract the mid edge and give a circle to it. To do that, we can go to the mesh uh, menu. And in the analyze menu, we have this face boundaries. Give the face boundaries here. And as you can see, if I bake that, you can see we have the boundaries of the triangles, which is really useful. Okay, now that we have the face boundaries, we can offset that by going to the curve, because it's a curve tool, uh, utility, and here we have the offset curve components. Just give that to the curve. Uh, you can also connect that to the plane, so it assumes that this is the plane of the triangle. Turn this off. The distance, I'm going to use expression minus x, because I want to go inwards, minus x and give a number slider to this so we can control the offset. Okay, now that we have the triangles, what we have to do here is to give this connection. The problem here is that these edges don't need a connection. So the best method is to go to the mesh, uh, analyzes and use this mesh edges. I'm going to give that to the mesh output. And the most important thing here is the Naked edges is going to be exactly the edges we want to avoid, and the interior edges is the edges we need. Uh, so here we just give a circle at the center of this uh, line. We're going to go to the curve, and uh, in the analyzes menu we have this perpendicular frame component. We just simply reparameterize the curve, so it's going to be from zero to one. And we give the 0 0.5 to extract the mid. So 0 0.5. Just give a panel 0 0.5 for this. And also go to display and preview plane size to maybe one. Okay, here we have the plane. And what we have to do is to put a circle inside this plane. So I'm going to go to the curve and use this circle. And we can give a radius. And obviously this radius has to be more than the offset we have here, right? So be sure to make this bigger. Okay. Now that we have that, we can turn off the interior edges. We have the circles and we have the offset curves. So I'm going to bring them all into a curve container, flatten it so everything is inside uh, one group. Uh, remember before we do that we can also flatten here 
and flatten the circle. And the reason I'm doing this is to say the first is the offset curves and then is the circles. So we can then uh, divide them into two groups. Okay, now that we have that here, uh, what I want to do is to go to the intersection and shape. We can use this region slits. Give that here to the region. And the width uh, is it's basically going to be the thickness of the material we have. So maybe it's going to be uh, 0 0.5 to 3. And as you can see here, we have to make that a little bit smaller, 0 0.1, and put that to 0 0.2. So that is going to be the thickness of the material. And as you can see here, uh, we will have the correct results, which is uh, the region slits we need here. Okay, now the problem here is how can we extract the circles and the triangles into two groups? As you can see here, when you get the region slits, it's, uh, all of them are in one group. So I'm going to flatten this so all of them go back into one group, okay? If you don't know about flatten or graph, you can watch a video I'm going to put up here. Uh, but the reason I'm doing this is to uh, use the number of groups in the offset curve and the circles to put that into two groups. So I'm going to go to the sets, list length, count the offset curves, also count the circles. Okay, I have to count them separately because we need those numbers. Here, I'm going to put that into a number container integer with a shift key. The first one is the uh, offset, the second one are the circles, and now we have the so we need two groups. One is 122 and another one is 168. Uh, to do that, you can simply use the partition from the set list, partition list. Just search for parts. Okay. And we say divide this into two groups. And as you can see here, we have two groups here. And uh, what I usually use is to go to the tree and use this explode tree tool. And you can also right click and match outputs if you have more groups, but this is obviously going to give you the outputs. The simplify is going to re remove the extra zeros and then you have two set of groups. So now I can give different colors, maybe a custom preview to the first group with a swatch. Okay, and another one to the second group, maybe black, and you can see that we have them here. Uh, the last technique I want to use here to give it a thickness is to use the Pufferfish plugin, uh, which is really great. Uh, in the surface menu, you can find a tool called Offset Surface. You can do that in Grasshopper, but the, this is going to make it really easier. So I'm going to give that give the surface to the surface input. And distance on both this uh, both sides is really important. So if you have this triangle and you want to give it a thickness exactly at the center, I mean, this is going to be the center edge. Uh, if the thickness is T, obviously you have to give it a T divided by two and a minus T divided by two. So uh, to the distance of the both side, I'm going to use the thickness we used here, put it in a number container and give it to the distance, uh, X divided by two and to the both sides, minus X divided by two give this to here. Turn this off and you can see that this is exactly at the center and also another one. This time to the second group and you can see it's complete thickness like that. That's how you can use the region slits to easily produce a series of connections between a series of triangles. Uh, I can also use the 
a mesh here whatever mesh you give to the input it's going to up, uh, update and as you can see here we have the connections uh, remember that you can change the offset and also uh, increase or decrease the radius here 0 0.8 if you want to make it bigger and it doesn't have to be smaller than this number so I'm going to say 0 0.5 you can see the connection here and you obviously have them in two groups so you can bake that in Rhino bake that into layer one and bake that into layer two okay I hope this tutorial was useful and uh, thanks for watching remember to like and subscribe to our channel to get notified about our new videos and uh, thanks for watching see you next time bye